Luca, welcome back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's good to be back here. So, um, how does it feel to be back? It feels uh, a bit like when I go back to Italy and uh, everything is good and uh, people are great. L'espresso is better, yes. L'espresso is good, uh, but uh, things are a bit complicated. Of course, yeah. yeah so, yes, we, we, sp we, do, we do complexity here. Yes, right, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well. All right. We know each other for um, the longest time, right? Uh, you were an you were undergraduate when I first met you in Italy. Yeah, I, I, was on sabbatical, I was on sabbatical, I spent a sabbatical in Rome, and there you were. I was really amazed to meet you. To, to be, uh, uh, I have a good eye, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, a, I was a senior in college, and uh, you knew my advisor, because I guess was your postdoc at San Diego the year before. And we... Yeah, I had a really great time doing a somewhat research-oriented senior thesis, and I didn't get any offer of a real job after I graduated, so then I started doing grad school. Great. And um, that seemed to have worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. so. At some point, you started working at IBM. Yeah, uh, Philou Crescenzi, my advisor, he also knew Madhu Sudan, right. who was at IBM at that point. And in my second year of grad school, as was pretty common for students in my program, I was looking for somewhere to go and spend a period abroad. So I wrote to Madhu to say that I uh, would really la like to come and visit uh, IBM and that the Italian government would uh, pay for the visit. And uh, Madhu was happy. This was off season, so not in the summer, but in the fall when they don't have a lot of students going around. So I guess Madhu was happy to have someone new. And, um, and so I went. And very luckily, just a few weeks before uh, going, I was reading this paper on uh, PCP and uh, harness of approximation mm -hmm. that Mihir Bellar and Ode Goldrek and Madhu had just uh, put online. It was a 120-page paper. And it was the first time that a lot of those new ideas on how to go beyond the original PCP construction mm -hmm. and get stronger results were written down with all the details. And I've been uh, thinking about one section where they uh, show how you do reductions from PCP to optimization problems with uh, gadgets. And uh, they had a very abstract way of uh, thinking about that. And I was thinking that it should be possible to search for an optimal gadget right. automatically. So th this is where this idea came from. Okay, right. Yeah. So it so originated I, in Italy. Okay, it did. <laughs> and so, I, um, so I flew to New York with uh, Alitalia. And they lost my bags with all oh the my stuff. God. And then I had to get a car to get to the IBM lab, which was a bit outside of New York City. Uh, but I was not 25, so I couldn't get a car. Uh, and so my first day there, with no clothes and no house and no car, I, I still had this, this idea. And I Nothing else to do, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I told Madhu, and uh, he immediately uh, got it. And then the following day, he basically re-explained the idea to me, but uh, much, much better. Wow. And uh, then we talked to Greg Sorkin and David Williamson that showed how to, could it be extended to other problems. And so within a few days, we had a pretty nice piece of work. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kept working with uh, Madhu well, after that, or not? We stayed in touch. Just before I left, we were starting to work on uh, a classification of uh, constraint satisfaction problems. I see. Uh, which is something that we um, can Right, uh, yes, yes, of course, yes. Uh, um, so then I finished, well, then I ran out of my um, uh, graduate fellowship, which the way it was working in Italy at that point, or not working, was that the fellowship would run out one year before you would actually graduate. Or sort of the time it took to get together the graduation bureaucracy took a year after the fact. So I spent that gap year in uh, Geneva. Yes, yes. And right. I started working on pseudorandomness and extractors. That, that and was, that like was that. Also, also very lucky. OK, right, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so finally, I got officially my PhD. And I was going to spend a year again in New York at IBM working with Madhu. But at that point, Madhu got the offer to, of course, uh, move, to move to MIT. To MIT yeah. And so he told me, well, would you like to come to MIT instead? And I said, well, <laughs> I would very much like to come to MIT instead. And so uh, off I went. So, and then, then, then you went to, you went to uh, Colombia after that year? Yeah, I was originally thinking that maybe after that year abroad, I would uh, go back to Italy. 
But did you, at MIT, it was, um, was life-changing. There were a lot of uh, great people there. Uh, Oda Goldreich was there on sabbatical. He had a big impact on me. And the students there, they were, um, uh, you know, Amit Sahai was there, Salil mm. Batan, uh, Danny Lewin, uh, Adam Clients, uh, Evgeny Dodis, Tal Martin, wow. Rosario Michans. Okay. It was a analyst in Skaya. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great group. And uh, in, the, in the spring semester, we did this reading group to try to understand a work of Avi Widerson and Russell in Pagliazzo that just come out, where they were showing that P equals PPP under plausible mm. assumptions. And we actually spent like three months on that because that paper was building up on five or six previous papers from the past 10 years. We decided we would really like to uh, understand the whole sequence. We no particular goal in mind because it seemed that the work of Russell and Avi was the final word on the matter. And he said that reading group led to a lot of uh, new work. So Adam Clivan said this idea of uh, applying the same stuff non-deterministically. So see. independently with either Van Mil Wilkebeck, uh, okay, he proved okay. that graph non-isomorphism is in NP and the right, right, assumptions. Right, right, right. And then I did this work on uh, extractors and pseudonym generators that um, still seems to be the best right. that I've done yes. after well, years. We'll uh, be the judge, right? Here. Salil uh, had some improvement on that, that Omer, uh, Omer Reingold and Randras also had independently. So they started working together. I see. And, uh, Omer and Was Salil, that right, uh, Andrew? Okay. Yeah, so Omar and Salil started working together because of that. Ran was also in that group? Or was no, there? Omar and Ran were in Israel. I see. Uh, I think I, I told Avi about the result, and then Avi told Ran, and then Ran asked, asked for I the see. paper, and then they immediately see this improvement that I Salil also said. I, I see, I see, okay. And that was the beginning of Omar and Salil working together that led mm -hmm. to so many, that's, that's so many other things. things. Yes, right. Yeah. Well, and so, and yeah, this, I, this, was, this had so much impact that uh, even we at Berkeley heard about it and, and uh, decided to hire you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at uh, the point, I had pretty much never been to California. And I was enjoying life in New York uh, quite a bit. But everybody uh, was telling me that they wouldn't speak to me again if I didn't accept the Berkeley offer. The, really? Uh, OK, OK. So that's <laughs> I thought it was only us who told you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you for sure. But actually, everybody else was very oh, that, that, adamant uh, that uh, I had to amazing. Okay, uh, okay. take that, this job. That, that's good to know. Um, great. So, um, and uh, that's how we became colleagues. Uh, I, I, what I remember uh, f most fondly is, uh, is uh, your... Uh, uh, so let's call it intellectual leadership. So sort of, we you know that 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 whenever there was something interesting, you took the chalk and and you took a marker and then started explaining it uh, for us at, at theory lunch. Uh, you know, so so I learned so many things from you. It was here that you started your blog. Am I right? Yeah, this was in um, uh, 2006. I it was the first year that Andy Yao had started his institute at Tsinghua ah. University in uh, Beijing. And one of my students, uh, Hotel Kui, was spending a whole year there. It was one of three American students that uh, were there, two from Berkeley, one from MIT. So it was spring break of uh, 2006. It was in the middle of this, this year. And I went to spend um, a, a week uh, like giving a couple of talks to the students there in uh, Beijing and uh, talking to them and uh, also seeing China for the, for the first time. So this was before at least I had Facebook. And um, I. It was not before the Facebook, but it was before your Facebook. Before yes. I did, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a late adopter for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I wanted some place where I could uh, send friends pictures and stories about what was going on. So much to say, yes, right. Yeah, yeah so I, I, st I started this blog and uh, I sent the link to a couple of people. But then by the end of the week, lots of people were uh, reading it. So when I came back, I thought maybe I'll keep it running for a few more weeks and write about some uh, uh, technical stuff. And then eight years later, uh, it's still uh, it's still going. I was I was a great fan. I, I hope I hope to 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 keep reading it here. Additive combinatorics. Yeah, there was a there was a time that it seemed that well there, there was this work of uh, Ben Green and uh, Terry Tao where they proved that the primes have arbitrary long arithmetic progressions, mm -hmm. and there was a notion of uh, pseudo randomness in that paper of showing that um, 
so they, they already knew that dense sets of integers have arbitrary long arithmetic progressions. Mm -hmm. And they knew that uh, set the integers that in some technical sense are almost prime are pseudo-random in a very strong sense. And that the primes were dense inside these almost primes. And so then they had this intuition that, because I say, if uh, dense sets of integers have this property, sets that are dense in a pseudo-random set should also have this property. Right. And so they, they, make it, they made it work. Okay. And what I uh, thought would be really interesting was to see if there was a way to understand what they were doing in the way we think about pseudo randomness. I see. Uh, which there was, and that led to a few mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interesting pieces of work. And uh, what came next? Uh, you worked on, uh, you worked more on approximability and PCP, you worked on, on uh, the unique game, games. Of, uh yeah, in, in complexity theory, the two areas that I keep going back to are hardness approximation and approximation algorithms and uh, pseudo randomness and the uh, average case complexity. And there was that point that it seemed that these ideas in additive combinatorics had some connection that I wanted to mm -hmm. explore. And what I worked on next was motivated by the fact that it seemed that random walks in graphs and expanded graphs and the uh, properties of expanders and so on seemed to also come up a lot, both mm -hmm. in complexity theory, in various areas of complexity theory. So I thought I would spend maybe a few months learning about spectral graph spectral theory, graph theory yeah. from the beginning and have those techniques a little bit more clear in my mind. Uh, but that was five years ago and I'm still uh, yes. working on it because I found that there is so much, um, there are so many interesting open questions and uh, uh, it's so connected to new work on approximation algorithms or even exact algorithms like they work on uh, max flow using electrical networks. Yes, that's right, yes, yes. And uh, so much that uh, you are going to be having this uh, semester program. Uh, starting in a few days. Yeah, next um, week or in a couple yeah. of weeks we're going to have a program on uh, spectral graph theory where all the people we hoped would come came and uh, it promises to be really exciting. They really, it's, ca it's occurring at the right time. Great. That, uh, there is already a lot of things that people have been uh, developing and it's a good place to share them. But it also seems uh, that there is a tipping point that something much bigger is going to happen and maybe the institute we want to be the the, the locus for the, the, the place for tipping points yes yeah. i mean that, that that's for the simon institute as you know is, is for yes right how are you looking uh, at your uh, at your uh, at your role in the Sim at the institute well, you know when i um when i interviewed uh here at berkeley it was a bit different from the way interviews usually go because then people like everybody's trying to tell you about what the place is like and what your work is going to be like in this place. But when I interviewed, everybody was asking me, so you what are it. you going to <laughs> do here? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is this yeah, yeah. senior scientist yeah. uh, job? And I'm still not so sure, but I, I think that really uh, ever since that experience... Uh, that let I, me tell you, two years later, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, like ever since that experience at MIT of that reading group where we were just interested in one paper and all kind of things came, came out of. Uh, I've really been interested in uh, exploring like, new things I don't know much about, but it seemed... Uh, really Serendipity, yes. Yeah. Yes, the, this is, uh, yeah, uh, I love that. This is, this is, uh, this sounds like a great plan. Yeah. So it seems here I can do that uh, as a job. That, as uh, a job and very intensely. See, like, and then new and things and are yes, coming and, up and, and, and try to connect to people that yes. might be good organizers for new right, programs. Right.